Hey, Mark Shepard here, Healing Pastures, Mark Shepard songs, and uh, I'm in front of the historic Brick Chapel here on Route 27 in Canton, New York, and uh, this is the church I can see from my backyard a little bit uh, in the winter, and for me, having grown up in a Presbyterian church and then pursued a study of comparative religions and a lifelong trying to understand and seek what this feeling is that I have, that spirit has called, and spirit has guided me, and spirit has challenged me. And the fact that more than anything, beyond any particular theology, beyond any particular creed, beyond any particular philosophy, beyond any particular belief system, ultimately, we humans need each other and we need to come together in a place where we can truly feel like we are accepted as the frail, fragile, imperfect, hurting, wounded, traumatized, lonely, yearning beings that we are. Many of us have grown up in a culture of the stiff upper lip where we just, particularly men are told, you just have to tough it out. Don't, don't be weak. Don't be a complainer. But ultimately, we need a place where we can express our deepest longing for the source that created us, where we can express our deepest longing for connection with each other, where we can have a chance to heal the things that all of us have been wounded in. Heal the things that all have been wounded. I don't know. Where we have a place where if someone says, hey, I'm feeling really de depressed or I'm struggling with anxiety, where we're not judged as crazy or we're not judged as someone to avoid. A place where we can talk about our real stuff. And maybe that's, maybe that's an illusion. Maybe that's not possible. But in my songs, I just recorded a song this week called Welcome to Where You Are. And there's a line in it, I am the empty hallways filled with empty sound. I am the lonely seeker, a case of lost, not found. And then the song goes on to say, but there amidst the bitterness, there is a word that sings of you. There is a word that sings of me. That word is we. We are the ones who gain and lose. We fight the battles, get the blues. We are the stones of all foundations. We are the lost generations. And every generation has its share of pain as we come into the world and realize that, oh, you know, this is a world of hard objects. And sometimes we get in the way of hard objects. And sometimes we get in the way of wounded people who are striking out in their pain and who are looking to make themselves feel better at our expense. And that's just part of the human condition. But we need a place. We need a place that is sacred, a place that is holy ground, a place where we can come and if tears need to flow, to let them flow. Where if joy needs to be expressed, to be expressed. Our hearts are wounded people. And we live in a time when more and more people are cut off and separated from each other by this wonderful technology that I'm holding in my hand. It's so good and yet it is causing us to disconnect, it's causing us to be apart and to suffer. 
and I long for a place where I can sing my songs and not feel like people are just waiting for it to be over. I need a place where I can speak the truth and share the things I've learned with people who are willing to try some stuff out. And I don't know if Brick Chapel is the place. It feels like that's where I'm being called and that's where I'm being guided to. But in the song, the song goes on to say, we are the empty churches filled with empty prayer. And at the time I wrote the song, I was 16 years old. And I was having kind of a crisis. The song is really a cry for help. And the strange thing is my mom, who is an elder in the church and very active in the Yorktown Presbyterian Church and then up in the, uh, the Canton Presbyterian Church, uh, the Park Street Church. This was her favorite song. She would often ask me to sing it, but the reality is it was a cry for help. It was a cry for help. But as life has gone on, the idea of emptiness is not a negative. Like when, when I'm in an empty church or an empty auditorium and I can just sit there and feel the years and years of people coming with their pain, their joys, their sorrows, their yearnings. The thing that the Christian church gets right is this longing for forgiveness, this longing for God, the creator of all that is, to care about us individually, because sometimes it feels like we are so alone in the vastness of space. We are so alone in our marriages. We are so alone in our friendships. We are so alone everywhere we go and there's this yearning for connection and the feeling and the ability to just be able to be ourselves, to be silly, to be vulnerable, and to not have that used against us or used as an excuse to exclude us. And that's one of the things I long for. And I don't know if there are other people out there who are longing for that as well. And part of the blessing and curse of my particular neurology is I feel emotions deeply and I can't push them down. They come out. And I've been given the gift of being able to write songs. And sometimes the songs are from difficult places and sometimes the songs have saved my life. Other times the songs there are three ways to write songs. One is to write a song that you can write. You have the skills, you have the ability, you have a topic and you can write a song. The second kind of songwriting is writing a song because you want to. You can write a song because you can and you can write a song because you want to. You know, I've written songs like Together We Could Change the World was a song I wanted to write. And then there's the third kind of song. The kind of song that you write because you have to write it. Because if you don't write that song, you will die. Those are the songs I want to be able to share somewhere where it freaking matters. Where I can sing a song that saved my life and to be able to send it out into the ears and hearts of other people not to bring them down, but to give them a lifeline to the fact that maybe this song or some other song could save their life, could save their soul, could save their heart, could save their spirit from struggling, from darkness, from pain. That for me is what I wish could happen here. And I don't know if it's possible. Because right now, I don't know a lot of things. But I do know that something put me here. 
to do something with my life that is more than just taking up space, to do something with my life, to use the gifts and abilities I have, not for my own ego, not for my own bank account, but for something bigger than who I am. And as I walk through this graveyard, next to this beautiful little historic church, these people, these people got together and they worshiped with each other. Even if they were pissed at each other, even if they didn't always like each other, they got together and they worshiped something beyond themselves and they gathered to take care of this building, not for money, but because they loved it and they loved each other. And I am struggling right now. And I don't want to be a burden on other people. I just need a place to sing. I need a place to pray where I can feel welcomed and where I can be who I am with my doubts, with my questions with the things that I find hard to believe, with the things that are easy, with the things that can make a difference for someone else at some point. These people, these people are no longer with us in the body. But look, they left behind a sacred space, an empty church, it stands empty all winter. Is it possible to fill it with prayer? Is it possible to fill it with prayer year round? I want it. I don't know if anybody else wants it. If you want something like this, can you just let me know? Can you come to one of our potlucks every second Saturday we're having a potluck, I'm doing some music, and we're trying to build some community of people who care. Who care about a little community, a little farm community, where people are trying to make a living, trying to get by, trying to take care of each other, dealing with real life stuff, births and deaths, loneliness, heartbreak, suicide, illness, getting old, the real issues that we all face that we can't hide from behind our YouTube channels and our social media accounts and our Facebook and our email, a place where real people can come together in person and pray to however they perceive God and ask for help and ask for prayers and give prayers and hold in their mind the idea of love and healing and appreciation for God's great creation and to do what we can do to preserve our community, to preserve our planet, to preserve something for our children that is filled with joy and meaning. And that was a long, long thing. And I just had to say it. And hopefully someone can take it in the spirit that it is offered. And vulnerability, men, doesn't make us weak. And ladies, when your man is allowed to be a human being, it doesn't make him weak. And men, we're all in this together. Men and women, we can do this together. This is, this is what we have our time on earth to make a positive difference and to leave some kind of a legacy for our children and our children's children and their children and their children's children. So 200 years from now, hopefully this little church will still be a vibrant, loving magnet for people who long to be loved. Peace.
love, grooviness. Amen. I'd like to welcome you to where you are. Needless to say, the door is always a door. I'd like to tell you what I am today. I'll say it now before it slips away. I'm something else beside that person over there. I'm something else besides the face I wear I am the empty hallways Filled with empty sound I am the lonely seeker A case of lost not found There is a word that sings of you There is a word that sings of me That word is we We are the ones who gain and lose We fight the battles, get the blues generations We are the ones who gain and lose We fight the battles, get the blues We are the stones of our foundations We are the lost generations Some knowing force to occupy the chairs held now by ghosts. Others will follow when their time has come. It's all the same for everyone. We vainly try to gain the source. Wasted is the kindness of the host. While our groping minds soon are numb From the sight of what we have become We're something else besides those people over there We're something else besides the labels that we bear We are the empty churches Filled with empty prayer Sons and daughters Choking with despair We stand alone amidst our burned out lives And you don't seem to care That we once cared We are the ones who gain Get the blues We are the stones of our foundations We are the lost generations We are the ones who gain and lose We fight the battles, get the blues Stones above foundations, we are the lost generations. And you don't seem to care that we once care. And you don't seem to care that we once care. And you don't seem to care that we once care. 
All across our country, rural churches are standing empty. Congregations are getting older and they're dwindling. I think it's time to reinvent and to take back our spirituality in a way that works, in a way that's healing and profoundly adaptable to the craziness of our modern life. And that's what I'm trying to do. I hope you'll join me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support and your encouragement. And thanks for recognizing that I'm, I'm just trying to do the best I can with the call that has been haunting me all my life. So once again, thanks for watching. Peace, love, grooviness. Hopefully I will see you at one of our next Brick Chapel potlucks. And hopefully we can begin to fill this church up year round at some point in a way that is economically feasible and spiritually profound and wonderful. Thanks. <laughs>